<clears throat> Welcome to Grace for today. <clears throat> Blessings, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and to be glad in it. The joy of the Lord really is our strength. I don't know how people make it without the joy of the Lord, without the peace of God, without the hand of God upon your life. We need him. I need him. So we are thankful for all that he has done, all that he is doing, and he is faithful to his word. Listen, there is no God like our God. There is no God like our God. He remains the same. He remains the same. Hallelujah and glory to God. We're going to give you a few moments to come on. All right. Good morning. There you go. I was trying to make sure y'all could see me. Good morning, everybody. All right. Hey, y'all. So I am eternally grateful for all that the Lord is doing. And I did want to share a little um, story with you on this morning before we get started. So I'll give you a few moments to come on and then the others will have to catch the replay for this. I, I was um, listening to a man of God this morning. And he was doing something that I'm going to do shortly. Uh, it's called Meditations and Confessions. I think we'll do this after we finish this study on um, the sower, the seed, and the soil. We'll do it after that. But I, um, I wanted to read this to you. And um, some of you will understand and relate. Some will not. But I believe you'll get it. So um, I wrote it to make sure I didn't mess up anything too bad. So <laughs> bear with me just a moment. All right, so, um, and you may not know the answer, but so it's a redundant question because I'm going to explain it. How do you cook sugar cane syrup? How do you make cane syrup? You know, you have the ones y'all buy in the store. Um, and how do you get the best and the sweetest product? It starts with good soil, with good seed planted in that good soil. My grandfather was what we call today an entrepreneur. He made um, cane syrup and he sold it. And uh, it was always in the winter time. I'm telling you this so that, you know, we can get to our lesson, but, and while others are coming. And so he would make it every year. And I remember I had the pleasure of being there and watching and sometimes being allowed to help. But I will tell you uh, the process that I remember. <clears throat> My siblings are on and may have, you know, other things to add. But let me just tell you this part. You grow your sugar cane. I know we don't see that very often, but you grow your sugar cane. And once you harvest it, you, you take that sugar cane and you feed it through a meal. The meal squeezes out the juice. The juice runs from the meal to your pans, metal large pans. But you have something to strain that juice to keep the debris out, cheesecloth or whatever the case may be. And it would strain the juice to make sure that it stayed as pure as it could. But you would also have another process. Stay with me. So the meal would, you feed your sugar cane through the meal. It would squeeze out the juice. So you had somebody helping you, partners. You would squeeze the juice. The juice would come running from the pan. It from the meal into the pan and there was a fire underneath the pan, huge pan, six, seven, eight feet long. Um, I don't know where those pans are today, but uh, he would have fire underneath and he'd have skimmers um, made of some type of metal, kind of like um, wire, but you would skim, use it to skim off the debris as it was cooking. You have to cook the syrup. So the juice... Um, would go into the pans and uh, the cheesecloth or whatever kind of fabric would remove the, the, the fibers from the sugar cane that may still be there or any other debris that would happen to be there so that you'd have less of that in your, your syrup, syrup, whatever y'all say. Um, but the thing you would do is that you would stir it. There were little, little dividers. You would stir it. You would have to stir slow enough because you're cooking it. But you would skim as you saw the white froth 
um, as it was cooking, it would have white froth and debris on top. You would take it off and sling it over there somewhere because you didn't want that in your product. You would do repetitiously the same thing while the syrup cooked. I want y'all to stay with me. This is going to my lesson. Just stay with me. You would have to give attention to the juice in the pan because as it is cooking, because you've got fire underneath it, cooking it, preparing it to change, to be transformed from sugarcane juice to syrup. And you could tell when it started to thicken. But the thing that produced the sugar cane syrup was the repetition of stirring, waiting, skimming. Stirring, waiting, skimming. Good morning, everybody. Y'all may have to catch the replay to get all this. But, but when you finished and the syrup was thick and it was ready to be put into its containers, on the at the bottom so to speak of the pan there was a hole a nozzle so to speak that was stopped up while you were cooking it was filled with usually a cloth or something my grandfather would unplug it uncork it if you would and the juice now sugarcane syrup would run out into the containers then we would take that juice and begin filling the smaller quart containers or the pints Here's my reasoning. Sometimes the problem we have with receiving from God, we don't want to take the time to be repetitious, to stir the word of God in us, to skim off the things that the word is revealing to us in our lives. We hear the word we don't commit to meditating. To meditate is to roll it over and over and over. We read it one time. We feel comforted knowing that God spoke that to us and we never repeat it again and again. Therefore, we are not repetitious. Joshua 1 and 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. How often? Day and night. Meditate in the word day and night, which means getting that scripture that you said God spoke to you and you repeat it over and over, over and over, over and over till it becomes ingrained in you, a part of you. You hear it. You believe it. You speak it. And you repeat. Now let me just tell you something. Let me tell y'all something. You have to be intentional. Not just the song. But we should be intentional in our repeating and speaking the word of God in order for us to get the sweet of the land to get the sweet that God has promised to us. You wonder why things aren't going the way you think they should. Why don't you meditate in the word? Listen, the thing is this, the Lord spoke to me last month and said, I want you to, to, to read every day. For me, that can be, you know, you have to get up early for me to, to read a whole chapter every day. But he said, I want you to read whatever it was, um, Ephesians 3, let's say. Read it every day. And I've been reading it every day. I might've missed the morning, but I, when I got to work, I would put it on YouTube or I would read it there and let listen to it. And as I've heard it, God has been showing me bits and pieces. But the, the benefit comes from our obedience. Meditate in the word. Then he said to me, I'm telling y'all my secrets. He said, I'm talking about Edna Jameson. He said, I want you to remember this scripture. 2 Corinthians 9, 27. He said, I keep under, I think it's 2 Corinthians 9, 27. I keep under my body, lest when I preach to others, I myself become a castaway. Another translation of that says, I make my body a slave. 
I said, Lord, I hear you. And it wasn't talking about getting whips and beating my back. It wasn't talking about, you know, um, not eating for days at a time. You know, if the Lord leads you on the fast, so be it. I'm going to run out of time. But I needed to give you that. Listen. But what he said was, you've got to do what you need to do to get your body to work. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And if the enemy is trying to attack your body, then you can't be used the way you should for the kingdom of God. So I repeat that scripture every day. I keep under my body. I can't let it tell me everything to do. I can't let it say you're tired, sleep all the time. I do believe in the Sabbath rest. But I also believe I need to go to bed so that I can get up and walk on my treadmill, do my exercises so these titanium hips will work like they should without pain. That part is on me. God is looking for people who will not just read the scripture, read the scripture and say that is so true and you don't recall anymore. He said, if you hear the word and you, you, you're like a man that looks in the mirror, he sees what he looks like, goes his way and forgets what he saw. Yes, I'm yelling because we're forgetting what we saw and we're forgetting the word of God. We're not allowing it to saturate. My pastor did a series some years ago, and he's done it since then, and it's important. And I don't remember all the title, but I remember some of the parts of it was saturation and maturation and probably something else. He has a way with all these words. But we should be saturated with the word. So when we hear foolishness, we should mature. That's what maturation is. It's maturing. When that syrup that was cooking on uh uh underneath uh uh under the fire underneath it, when it was mature, when it was ready, when it was thick enough for consumption, some of us are not ready to be used, and we're not ready to get out of our trial because we haven't matured. You love Jesus. I love Jesus. Okay, maybe I got up too early. <laughs> we we got to love him enough to be saturated with his word. I do things like, and I've said this to you all before. I don't know that I have one here. Um, I will do things like, um, I probably don't have one here. I thought I had one. Uh, I will get, and I've said this to you all before, this Bible is tearing up. Um, I will get, here's one. It's an inexpensive way to get the scriptures in you. I will get um, posted, I mean, index cards. You can get a 500, I think it is, or something outrageous, for like a dollar, the Dollar Tree. Well, a dollar 25 tree. And you write scriptures. You meditate on them, poke them in your purse. While you have sitting, you, you, you make it a part. Meditate in the word of God. Roll it over. I'm saying, not saying you got to read one scripture a whole month. I'm saying that you must not just read the scripture and it then dissolves and disappears from your life, from your mind, from your thought. God, help me to focus. My time is gone. Help me to focus. So that I can eat the best of the land. So I can get the sweet of the land. So I can have the milk and honey that he promised. Now my granddaddy, the entrepreneur that he was, he did this religiously every year. And as I learned, I never, you know, decided to be an entrepreneur in, in making sugar cane syrup. That's not what I learned from him. I learned how to be an administrator from my granddaddy. My sister probably did too. My older sister who's watching. Because he had us to write letters for him. Listen, you will learn the things that God has put in you from varying sources and things. Yes, journal. I have, I've got tons of journals that God will speak a word to me. 
like he spoke to me this morning, this little parable to share with you all. I know you'll probably never make sugar cane syrup. You probably never will. And there are people who would do it different. My father, grandfather, had his on a raised brick oven. I had a friend who made um, sugarcane syrup. He had his oven. It was in the ground. And his pan sat on the ground. And he had a way to go underneath it to get, um, but to put the, the wood and stuff underneath it. I'd never seen that. But I knew it was the same process. That sugar cane has to run from the meal over here to this pan. It has to be strained and it has to cook. God, help us to cook till we're done. Mature us, grow us up, speak to us and help us to remember. Paul said, I put you in remembrance of these things that it will stir up your pure mind. Beloved, God wants us to be stirred. Not just for grace for today, but stirred that you'll remember the word of God, that you'll eat the word of God, that you'll speak the word of God, that you'll believe it for you, which makes it easier for you to speak it over somebody else's life. All right. I've yelled long enough. It's 731. Let's pray. Father. Open our understanding to receive my feeble attempt at giving this parable to your children, your sons, your daughters. Help us to see the relevance of repetitiously staying in your word, that you will speak to us and unveil and reveal. Give us understanding, purify our hearts and our minds. Guard our hearts. Help us to watch our eye gates and our ear gates that we won't let our eyes look at everything. We won't let our ears hear all the things that will deplete our faith. Give us words to help us grow in you and be strong in you and in the power of your might. Help us to be good stewards of the word of God. We thank you. For being our healer, heal our bodies, heal our minds, heal our wounded spirits, heal us of our past, that we won't believe the lies of the adversary. Thank you that no weapon formed against us will prosper. It will not produce what the enemy intended. Satan, you're a liar. No weapon formed against us will produce what you plan. But God, let your will be done in us. Let your will be done in us. Let your will be done in us. Lord, we decree and declare even now that our hearts are indicting a good matter. And that your word is lighting our path. You said your sheep hear your voice and another they will not follow. Help us to hear clearly. Yes, soul. Help us to hear clearly your word. Thank you now for what you've done and for what you're doing. We receive it done in Jesus' name. So it is. Amen. All right. My time is way gone. I will get to um, our scriptures tomorrow, Matthew 13. All right. I think that's right. Yes. We'll do that. But I, I may change the title of this to something a bit more accommodating, but I believe you got it. If not, go back and listen again. I believe the Lord wants to be, us to be reminded it is the repetition of staying in his word and letting it illuminate our path and that we will grow and mature, not just numerically or chronologically, but that we will mature in the things of God. All right, got to go. Please share the video, type in, catch the replay, hashtag graced for today. I hope that you have a great day. Don't forget about our YouTube channel. I'll upload this momentarily. And um, I hope that you will join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time and invite somebody to join you. And thank you for those who share continuously and those of you who give. God bless you. Hope to see you in the morning at 7.15. Until then, remember this, time spent in the word of God is never wasted. And you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.